Well, hey, Sun Valley, it is great to be with you again on the Daily Devo. If I don't know you, my name is James. I'm the campus pastor over at Sun Valley Queen Creek. Welcome. We're going to go ahead and jump right into it. A lot of I have a lot of scriptures to read today. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 through 11, and we're going to be talking about the second coming of Christ. So let's jump right in and read. Now concerning how and when all this will happen, dear brothers and sisters, we don't really need to write you. For you know quite well that the day of the Lord's return will come unexpectedly, like a thief in the night. Now understand this is Paul writing to the Thessalonian church. So imagine Paul sitting down writing a letter to this congregation. And what he's saying is here is that the day of the Lord or the second coming is going to happen unexpectedly, like a thief in the night. In other, in other words, we don't know when it's going to happen. You don't know when a thief is going to break into your house and try to steal your stuff. It's unexpected. Now, there have been many people, many pastors and so-called prophets that have tried to nail down dates for when the second coming is going to happen, and they've all failed. The Bible is very clear here that it's going to happen like a thief in the night. In other words, and it also goes to expand on that, verse number three, when people are saying everything is peaceful and secure, then disaster will fall on them as suddenly as a pregnant woman's labor pains begin and there will be no escape. People have no idea when it's going to happen. It's going to be so unexpected that it's going to be like a woman's labor pains. And all of a sudden, they just happen. I remember that when my wife was pregnant with our daughter, Jacqueline. We weren't sure when it was going to happen, but when it did, boy, did you know. Because then it was an experience. The Bible says there'll be no escape. Believers already saved and rescued, but those that don't know Jesus, God's wrath is going to be poured out upon wickedness. Verse number four. But you aren't in the dark about these things, dear brothers and sisters, and you won't be surprised when the day of the Lord comes like a thief. In other words, you already know about this believer because the Bible is literally right here talking about it. It's not unexpected to us, even though we might not know the date. We won't be surprised when it comes like a thief. And here's the reason why. For you are all children of the light and of the day. We don't belong to darkness and night. We are not children of the dark. We are children of the light. We know Jesus. And God has informed us of these things. But those that don't know Jesus, they're living in darkness. They don't know spiritual things. They're spiritually dead. So all of this is unexpected to them. But those of us who are spiritually alive, we know that it's coming. Verse number six. So, believer, be on your guard, not asleep like others. Stay alert and be clear-headed. Another version of the Bible calls it to be sober-minded and to be alert. Verse number seven. Night is the time when people sleep and drinkers get drunk. But let us who live in the light be clear-headed. In other words, we're sober and ready. Protected by the armor of faith and love. I love that, that we have our as so-called armor on our lives because of God's love and because of our faith and wearing as our helmet the confidence of our salvation. Can you believe that? Your salvation gives you confidence. Believe it. Okay, that you can be 100% confident because of your salvation. Confident in knowing where you're going. We don't have to worry about what's going to happen to us at the second coming. We already know we've been saved and we've been rescued. That gives us confidence. It's not something to be afraid of. It's something that we get to look forward to. The confidence of our salvation. Verse number nine. For God chose to save us. Don't ever forget that. Don't ever let that be something that you forget about, something that's mundane to you. It should not be. It should be fresh every day for God chose to save us through our Lord Jesus Christ and not to pour out his anger on us. We don't have to experience the wrath and the anger of God upon us. So we've already been saved and rescued. And then verse number 10 talks about that. Christ died for us so that whether we are dead or alive when he returns, we can live with him forever. So in other words, whether we've died already before Christ's return, or we are living during Christ's return, 
Every single one of us, if we've said yes to Jesus, we will live with him forever. In other words, that brings us confidence once again. We have confidence in our salvation. Verse number 11 says, so encourage each other and build each other up just as you are already doing. And we should be doing that every single day, encouraging each other. So this passage is kind of a contrast. As believers, we actually can look forward to the second coming of Christ. It's nothing to be afraid of. It's something that we can look forward to. But if you don't know Jesus, it's a time that will be scary, unexpected, experience of wrath poured out. So believers, we have to be on task. We got to help more people meet, know, and follow Jesus so they can experience the good news of great joy to all people so they can have that confidence that salvation brings just like it does to us. So I hope that you learned something new about the second coming of Christ today and also that you're encouraged by the confidence that you can have because of your salvation. Let's go ahead and pray. Jesus, thank you so much for your scripture. Thank you for salvation and the confidence that it brings. God, we know that you are going to return one day and we look forward to that because we've been saved and we've been rescued. Lead us, guide us, and direct us today by your Holy Spirit. Thank you for another day of life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We'll have a wonderful day, Sun Valley. We'll see you soon.